So as they get to they get to start working on the record in your spot. Yeah. What what was it like being yeah. in a studio with them? Like what who did production? How did how was that all coming together? So that that's a really good question because you know like it's really hard to talk about doing without talking about sub. And Onyx was in the band too. And Onyx is a really nice guy. He's their boy. Now Onyx was just rapping though, right? Just rapping. Okay. So Doom would start a lot of the beats. Like he, but he, he's not very patient. So if you hear even his later stuff, it all feels a little unfinished. Right. Raw. So the person who had, right. And the person who kind of was the finisher was, was Sub. I Sub see. was more technically adept. Um, and Gamble had a hand in it as well. And you know, that was kind of the process. But Sub really technically hemmed up a lot of stuff and came forward with a couple of beats as well. Well, a bunch of beats, in fact. And they worked in tandem, but, but Sub Rock was more the producer, mm -hmm. uh, which people don't really know. And I remember when Sub Rock bought, I got, I remember I got a 3000, he bought my MPC 60 from me. And I showed him how to use it in my, in my house. I had a little studio too. And I remember him picking it up like it was like second nature. So, you know, he, he was really uh, the finisher and, and very involved in the production, I say, more so than Doom. I see. So you mentioned earlier, you know, one of the real innovative things about this album is how they built the skits. But what do you remember about how they tied the skits together? I mean, it was uncanny how they had all of the records working with each other, mm -hmm. right? How they had figured it all out. And they literally had it all mapped out before they did it. Really? Like there wasn't a lot of second guessing and doing it in the studio. They showed up with their records and would just make shit. And what's even crazier is Doom, I had, a, like, I had like a bunch of crates in the studio, maybe like 20 crates. And I would let people go through my records, my friends, and, and Doom went through a lot of my records and he knew what records of mine he was gonna use when and where. Mm. It was wild. And he really had, him and Sub had a lot of it mapped out. And they would argue about how they were gonna approach it like in a, in a like pretty loving way, but they, they had, you know, sibling rivalry. They bickered a lot in a very sarcastic manner. Mm. And, and they busted each other's balls a lot. And that's one of the things I remember about those sessions, particularly is that there was a lot of, a lot of fucking cracking wise at each other. And Doom is a great artist. And he would draw pictures of Sub Roach. So <laughs> Sub Rock became Sub Roach, the, the angry cockroach. And he, he had the big cockroach that was Sub Rock drawings that he would put up on the wall. Because we had all these drawings we'd pin up on a wall like a mood board yeah. and, this, and, and a door with lots of stickers and drawings. Because my man Gibi, rest in peace, was a great artist. And he would draw this funny shit. But Sub would get it because fucking Doom would like always do Sub Roach drawings. <laughs> and they had, they had a lot of nicknames for each other. And Sub was always like kind of like, oh man. Like he was like, ah, oh, like this guy again. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He didn't really like... He didn't really start it where, where Doom started. He had a lot of nicknames, Sub Roach, Sub Roll. One time they, they threw a, a, a roll at him. I remember Doom had a, a roll he bought. He was like, give us your new name, Sub Roll. <laughs> so he was like, Sub Roll, Sub Roach, Sub Rock, uh, Sub Rosa one day. Wow. It just went on and on. There was a lot of jokes. And, and um, Sub Rock caught a lot of heat. He had thick skin. <laughs> and, you know, with, with Doom, you you can never really win with Doom. Like, he was around me and Pete and Search and, and Gibi and Gamble to a lesser extent. We could all snap. Mm -hmm. So there was, a, there was a lot of snapping going on. And I remember that as a strong component in making the record. It was one thing that was crazy is that we were locked out of our studio for like six to 12, eight to 12 weeks. I didn't really get to work a lot because Gamble was focused on their thing and and I always thought it was a little weird that that happened. And Gamble, I think, experimented a bit with them. He kind of mm -hmm. like did some on-the-job training with KMD, which, which, I, which in retrospect, I probably wouldn't have approached it that way nowadays. I probably would have done it differently. I probably would have had them go in a studio and make the whole record that way, and just somewhere not as expensive as Chung King where they mixed. Right. And that was it. I mean, what's funny is even I remember Humrush. So Humrush was... was a record, I had those drums and something else, and I had them hooked up a different way. And I walked into Chung King, and Sub Rock was using my drums. And I had them chopped up, like I slowed them down and chopped them up that way. And I was like, what the hell? And he was like, 
oh, you wasn't going to use them right anyway. Whoa. I was like, yo, <laughs> crazy? He was like fucking with me. And, and I remember I was pissed at Gamble because he gave him my drums. I was like, why would you not ask me? Oh, I didn't know. I was like, yo, you sat there while I chopped those up for like an hour. Damn. You know, like, and, and so that's why I got co-production credit on because I was mad. And I remember, and I sold the store somewhere else, I was pissed off and Doom was like, yo, let's go to the store. We should go to this, this deli, the Italian food center. And he bought me my sandwich that day and, and told me that was my advance for using my drums. <laughs> and I told him if that was my advance, I wanted to get two Manhattan special sodas. <laughs> so he bought me two, two coffee sodas. Um, and that was that. And, and I, was, I was like, oh, thanks. I ate my advance. So, so I never got paid for it, nor did I want to get paid for it. But, you know, it was pretty funny how that happened. Hum along if you can't sing along, hum along. Hmm. Look, that record was fun to make. There was zero, zero bad vibes with KMD, man. It was always really enjoyable. And, and Onyx was in the in the studio a lot. And he was pretty funny. And their whole crew, they had their the Get Yours Posse GYP was around. And and you know those guys were great, man. Jay Boogie and and everybody. Diego was it was and Pete Nice was was around. Search was not around a lot during the making of the record. Pete was around a lot more, and Bobito started to work with Pete at some point. I want to say it was after the first record, but, you know, Curious was around, CM was around. My best friend Paul lived with Curious Uptown, and that was the nerve center. Like, this was like my best friend from high school. And Paul, Paul Moore, who's now a lawyer, um, he was George's roommate, so I was up there a lot. They lived on 97th, and Bob lives right there too. Bobito lives in the, in the, the building next to George's on the same block. And that was like headquarters. We were mm. up there a lot, and and there was like a, a we there was a lot of energy and synergy within our our crews. You know, it was like we were very connected. You know, it was it was a lot of fun, man. It was it was great. It was a great moment in time. I want to quickly before we move on from Hum Rush, that song really caught my ear because first of all, it's a slow beat, and you Super you don't slow. you didn't hear a lot Sounds of that at that time. And screwed. Yeah, chopped and screwed. that was so different for the time, right? To have it something was. that 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 down tempo, and it's also really interesting because that to me, from this album, is the beat that sounds the most like Doom's later stuff. It is. It sounds very broken, um, and and I had it. I think like it was like eighty six or eighty eight. He slowed it down more. I remember that. And this is pre time compression, so you can really hear it dragging. And he used to, you know, the Sesame Street sample, mm. right? You know, it's Bert and Ernie, hum along, sing along. And I think, but I could be wrong, I think it was my Sesame Street record, but it could have been his. Mm -hmm. We had a bunch of them, and so did he, and I had a bunch of comic book records, and as did he. And he had free reign on my records. I'm not sure if it was mine. We might have the same record. It's not that unique a record. And um, I just thought it was genius, so, you know, how he had, he had Bert and Ernie singing along, and... It was cool, man. It was, it was, um, it was. It may be Big Bird, not Bert and Ernie, but I think it's just really cool how he put that together. It does sound like the later stuff, you know. Thanks for watching that, and if you dug that, leave a thumbs up and say what up in the comments, and make sure to subscribe to Stony Island Audio, Stony Island Audio. for more.